What's up everybody, TCM here, back with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to pass your GIAC certification, AKA kind of a SAN certification on your first attempt. Now I'm gonna talk through the study tips that I used and some of the advice that I got from others and how I use that to pass my exam. And trust me, you wanna pass these things on your first attempt because they are very expensive. So in this video, we're gonna cover the backstory a little bit of why I took a SAN certification and paid out of pocket for it. And then we're gonna go into the resources that I used and some of the study references and things that you can do to pass on your first try. So I will leave timestamps in the description. If you wanna skip the backstory, feel free. Um, other than that, as always, if you like the video, please do hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, love each and every one of you. But with that being said, we're going to kind of jump right into it. So if you saw my last video um, on the CISSP or the video on the CISSP and the video on passing that in a week, I kind of talked about uh, going for what is called the QSA from PCI. Uh, so PCI is the payment card industry and they kind of regulate uh, all the credit card payments that happen around the world. And in order to do security audits for that, uh, you have to be what's called a QSA. Um, in order to apply as a company, you have to meet criteria. In order to be a QSA as a person, you also have to meet that criteria. Uh, so the criteria is two certifications, um, one from like a column A and a column B, and I'll put them up on the screen here. But basically, one of the certifications that I went for was the CISSP. And the second one was an auditing certification that you had to go for. So I think I had the option of like the CISA, um, I forget what the other one was, and then the SAN certification. Now the cheapest certification would have been going for like the CISA. Um, unfortunately, it really wasn't a practical certification and I've heard that it's a pretty tough certification to get through if you don't have any audit background or anything like that. Um, I looked into the SAN certification and while it was like, I don't know, eight times more expensive or the GIAC certification, I'd say, um, even though it was like eight times more expensive, it was open book, open note, which I appreciated. And it seemed like it was something that was more technical and hands-on, which I also appreciated. So um, I would never pay out of pocket for uh, a SANS course unless I absolutely had to do it. And in this case, I had to do it. Um, I thought overall the course that I took, which was the GSNA, was uh, Audit 507. And I thought the course overall was really good, actually. Uh, materials are presented pretty well. It was mostly reading off of PowerPoint slides um, with some information added to it. And then there were labs. And I did appreciate the labs because they kind of allowed you to go through and actually audit some things. And a lot of it was some stuff I was familiar with, like Nmap and Burp Suite and tools like that. But there was also some new tricks to those tools that I learned. And then there was a lot of other audit tools that I was unfamiliar with. There was a lot of PowerShell scripting uh, to do auditing, which was cool. They covered bash scripting, which I thought was cool. And what was really new to me was like auditing Dockers and Kubernetes, which was really cool. Um, so I would say the course was up to date, really well taught, but I, I don't think overall the course was worth the price tag. Um, unfortunately, I feel like the QSA program is kind of pyramid schemey. Uh, hopefully they don't kick me out of the program for saying that, but it is what it is. But that's kind of why I I ended up going for the, the SANS uh, course and then the GIAC certification. So with that being said, um, the certification, the, when you do the course, it comes with all the materials, um, or at least if you do the course option. So you get all these books here. I've got like, I got six books. There's one for each day. So if they teach this in person, you, you do it per day. And then you get a workbook for all the different things that you go through. Um, when they say that you can bring an armful of notes for your open book, open notes to your exam, they are, I mean, they're literally not kidding. Like this is, <laughs> it's like you're back in high school or college again. Um, this is an armful of notes. You know, I have never taken a GIC certification before. So um, I went to a gentleman named Evan, who is a team member at TCM Security. And he is what I call our resident SANS expert because he's been through so many SANS courses and has a lot of GIAC certifications. And uh, I asked him, you know, what do you do? How do you study for this thing? Because there's so much information, like how how does one do open books, open notes? Uh, and he he sent me a link. He said, here's what I use for 
my certifications and my certification exam attempts. And uh, this has been successful for me. And I kind of followed that and it worked. So I'm going to kind of share that with you uh, so that it's kind of known maybe more on a broad scale. So moving over to the computer briefly, he sent me this article from Leslie Carhart, who goes by Hacks for Pancakes. Um, she wrote an article, looks like in 2015, which is a long time ago, on uh, how to take notes. And I'm going to list this down in the description below. I think it's pretty good. Uh, it kind of goes into the uh, way that she does it. And I, I made some alterations, but I still think it's worth reading. Uh, essentially, you get some of these post-it tabs, which I'll show you. Uh, and then you kind of go into an Excel sheet and you just go through your book. And as you go through your book, you write down uh, these things in the Excel sheet and you kind of just color coordinate it to your tabs. Eventually you sort it and then you print it out. So I got my inspiration from this article. Thank you, Evan, for sending it to me. Thank you, Leslie, for writing this because this is actually fantastic. Um, I'm just going to kind of tell you the little bit of tweaks that I made as I went through this. So. First things first, you do need post-it notes. So I went out and got these little post-it notes. Um, I got a bunch of these, like this is completely unopened, but I didn't know how many I was going to need. So I think I spent maybe 10 to $20 on, on post-it notes. Overkill, but you never know if you need, if you need more. It's better than having to run back to the store. Um, from there, what I did was I went and I started going through the book. And as I went through the book, I started indexing topics that I thought were important or I felt like could be relevant for the exam. So let's take a look at that on Excel. Uh, so here's kind of what it looks like. I went chapter by chapter. So the indexing system here is book one, and then this was section two, and then the page number that it correlated to. Um, and then I kind of just did these in order, and then I did them by color. Um, eventually, I went down, and then you could see color changes for uh, Book one, chapter three, book one, chapter four, chapter five. And then there's also these exercises down here that I color coordinated to specifics of uh, what chapter they, they showed up in. Um, so with that, you take these and you kind of just write it out to a way that makes sense for you. Um, so maybe like, hey, this is what the definition of auditing is, or here's the different policies, or here's where baselines are. It becomes really important, honestly, because when you're taking the exam, there's so many little nuances throughout the exam, at least in my experience, that it's not just a broad definition. Like, I, I don't want to give too much away, but for example, they might ask you, uh, they might show you a log file uh, and say, hey, where would you see this log file at? And you might have to go dig that up. Or they might say something like, hey, in Windows Event Manager, um, if you're doing logging, you know, what settings should be set ideally for this specifically? Um, and you go through and you have to kind of figure out what those are. Now, if you try to memorize all those from the books, you're going to have a hard time. But these books are meant to more be a reference guide. And for me, these are great because now when I go and I do auditing, I have a uh, more methodology. I have more to add to the checklist. Uh, and I, I know what to build out. So I think this is fantastic. You have a reference guy that you can always point back to. If you say, hey, I forget what settings I need to do, you can just always go back and point back to those. So there is value to these books, and I definitely intend on keeping them and using them later on. So with that being said, you then want to take these and sort these alphabetically, essentially. Um, alphabetically kind of screwed with me a little bit. Honestly, like as you learn your books and you learn your chapters within your books, I almost would go back and just leave it kind of like this. Like every day was a little bit different. So we might have a day on auditing, a day on Windows, a day on Linux. And then I would know, OK, within Linux, I knew what chapter or subchapter that was in. So leaving it like this honestly wasn't the worst idea, but switching it over and organizing it alphabetically wasn't terrible either. So you have this and then you can just print this out. So I made it to where I can print out every single day's notes, if that makes sense. Um, and then I put them on my books. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, so like book one, I just stapled the index to book one, if this will ever. There you go. So I, I just stapled the index and I wrote some notes down here on some of the stuff. Um, book two, like for Windows, it got a little bit uh, a little bit longer, so I had to go landscape. But it's still a uh, it's still a nice guide. And then the nice thing too is you know, you're not going to catch everything. Um, so something, for example, is in the last book, 
actually they give you an index for everything. So um, in this book, at the very end, you have like the index of indexes. Indices, I don't, I don't know what you call them. I don't know what the plural of index is, but this is kind of what it looks like, right? So you do that, and um, if you can't find it in your index, then you you just look in this master index, and there's a good chance it's there. There was points in the exam where nothing was showing up in any of my notes or the index or anything I could find in the book, and that's fine. Um, you know, that's kind of expected as well, and it's, you know, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, here's the other thing that you're doing. So I took the first uh, line, so 1.2.13. That page 13 is where I put my first blue tab. So if we're on book one, you could see that I kind of wrote it out, 1.2.13 over here on the side. That correlates to page 13 in the book. I know everything within that, uh, that blue tab is the first chapter or second chapter of that book. Um, next chapter would be the green one, and that kind of gets you to where a general area of you want to be. Um, so if I see green, I just open the green tab, for example, and then I know, okay, I got to find that page number with that area. But at least you're not hunting things down and having to find them on the fly because you only have three hours for an exam. And for my test, that was 115 questions. So you got like a minute and a half ish for each question, which isn't very long if you're like flipping through your book trying to find answers. Uh, so that's kind of really it. Um, I, you know, I recommend printing this out. They give you practice exams um, if you purchase that. I think that the practice exams were identical to what the exam was. I think they do a really good job of saying, hey, this is what the exam is going to feel like. And then I was able to take notes on that practice exam. That's why you see handwriting on on some of the indexes. Um, and then I was able to use those in my uh, my exam as well. They do give you some cheat sheets, like, for example, they gave me this, like, regex cheat sheet, which is kind of cool. Um, and then different little cheat sheets. I just stapled those all together in case I needed them, but I didn't use any of the cheat sheets that they had. Uh, but your mileage may vary on that. So long winded there. But the recap of this is you want to get some of these colored posted notes, right? Get some of these. You're going to want to index in an Excel or similar spreadsheet tool. Um, by color and just write out the page number of the chapter and how it correlates to you. Make this your own. Like I saw Leslie's guide and I said, hey, this isn't what's going to work best for me, but it's pretty close. I um, mean, what I'm showing you, my methodology based off of that might not be what works for you either. So um, make your notes your own so that you can understand them. And as you're going through these, just make sure you're you're indexing everything and that you can go back and you can color coordinate and um, be able to reference easily when you're taking your exam because time is everything on these exams. So that's my little tips and tricks. Hopefully this was informative for you. Uh, hopefully you never have to pay for a SAN certification out of pocket. Uh, a little side note, when I was going to take my exam, I had all my books and she's like, you must be here for the GIAC because they're the only ones that allow open notes at our testing center. Uh, by she, I mean the proctor, by the way. Um, and, she, and we were sitting down, she's like, so what agency are you with? And she meant like, FBI, CIA, because those are the companies that pay out of pocket for these things. Government pays big money for these certifications. And I was like, I am the one idiot that pays full price out of pocket for this because I had to. Uh, they do have work study programs. Um, I think if you can get, you know, I think $1,500 for this, if you could do the work study program um, and you pay $1,500 for a certification, I think that could be worth it depending on the certification. Uh, this GSNA certification, if you go Google it, there's literally nothing on it on Reddit, which I've never seen this before. I think there's like tech exams or something. Uh, one of those websites like that that uh, talks about it from like eight to 10 years ago. But the materials from 2021, um, very recently updated. I thought it was pretty good. So um, they're still keeping it up to date, even if nobody's talking about it. And obviously, it's still a requirement for the QSA. So they're doing something right there. For real this time, that is it. Uh, if you like this video, again, please do hit the like button, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz. We'll be back very soon with another video. Until then, peace out.